its meeting of I call to, uh, together the uh, call to order the January 13th, um, 2022 meeting of, of the Town of Amherst Council on Aging. Um, uh, call it to order. Um, and I wanna just say welcome to everyone who's joining us. Um, this is our first uh, meeting of 2022 as a council. And I so appreciate everyone uh, who's who's joining us in present. Hello to Margaret. I see her <laughs> joining. And uh, some of you have your your uh, I, uh, your phones um, or your um, system muted. Um, this is also a time, uh, let me just say um, that pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law GLC 30A subsection, subsection 18. Um, this meeting is being conducted by a remote participation. Um, so we're gonna do a roll call right now for members of the council, um, just to make sure that everyone's video and, and audio is working properly. And this will get you used to um, muting and unmuting uh, your, um, um, as, as we speak. Um, I see saying hello to Paul too. I see he's joined, just joined us and Margaret. Okay, so this is terrific. So um, um, let's see. So the, um, our council, um, I'm gonna start the roll call right now. I just signify by just say, saying or uh, raising your hand as present, uh, Bascom. All right, Fuller. Okay, I see he's a, hand, a raised hand. Uh, Helfer. All right, Koffler. Present. Uh, Montemayor. I don't see her yet uh, joining us. Uh, I'm here, uh, Christina uh, Char uh, Charbai. I see Christine. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. All right. And Jacqueline Smith Crooks is not present today. And let me just say the reason I'm uh, your agenda today says that uh, has her listed, as was our plan for her to gather us today. About this time yesterday, um, she, or maybe earlier, she called and she called from Cooley Dickinson Hospital. She is in the hospital right now. And um, she's very conscientious and she wanted to let me know in advance. So I would have time to uh, pull together this uh, and uh, coordinate this meeting this evening. So um, um, we certainly wish her, her well. Um, this is also a time, uh, a time at which um, we um, we ask you if um, if you're not speaking to mute that cuts down on background noise, and uh, you can um, our practice usually if you want to speak is you can simply just what, raise your hand. Uh, uh, you can also raise your hand electronically. Um, I see Norma here. Welcome, okay. Norma. Um, this is also at a time uh, during public uh, that we have public comment um, and that we ask any members of the public who wish to speak at this time to, uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, and uh, you have, if you wish to share anything specific with members of the council, uh, we ask you um, to do that at this time. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll proceed to our agenda for the evening. Um, you know, um, as you may know, lives are filled with both losses and discoveries. And um, this, uh, our council, our time on the council is, um, is no exception. Um, let me say that, um, um, 
another loss that I, ha I have shared with you, um, shared with you uh, is that, uh, that we hold in our thoughts, um, uh, the, um, the Rosemary's son, John, whose family was impacted uh, by the devastating fires in Colorado um, and basically lost uh, his home um, and was lucky to escape with um, his life. And um, that is certainly, please hold Rosemary um, and her husband, Dick, um, who have so together, have so long uh, uh, supported the town's Council on Aging uh, that this is a time of real stress for her. And um, there's, um, I think she's, uh, they're getting through this uh, with a, a great deal of stamina and courage. And um, so um, that's certainly, uh, but we send uh, healing thoughts to you, Rosemary, and your entire family. And I know I speak for everyone in saying that. Um, I wanna just move into the introduction and welcome to our newest member of the council. And that's uh, Christina Sharbai. And, um, you know, uh, Christina and I don't know each other yet well, but I will say that uh, what I have known uh, just so far uh, about her has um, blown me away. She is such, uh, she has been on the front lines of senior health care in nursing homes uh, in our area. She has, um, has stepped up in her house of worship um, as noticing and witnessing to the struggles and challenges uh, and joys that um, are experienced by um, uh, its oldest members. And I think I need to move them around. I'm <laughs> um, I've suddenly been cast into darkness. Um, so uh, um, Christina, welcome to you. Do you wanna just say a few words? We, I'll we, just say I look forward to working with everyone and achieving a common goal on behalf of the council. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, it's been exhilarating already. And it's so great I, to work with people uh, who help you lift your game and help us lift our game collectively. Um, I also want to uh, acknowledge a, a guest uh, um, uh, two guests, um, Charles Stevenson and Margaret Crone. Uh, you may have heard me talk about each one of them, uh, but they have expressed uh, certainly interest in the uh, support work uh, regarding um, uh, and advocacy regarding uh, seniors in Amherst. Margaret is affiliated with the University of Massachusetts and uh, in part of her studies. Uh, focus on seniors. And Chad has been in town uh, for a long time. It seems that he know it, his knowledge of our town um, is uh, encyclopedic. Um, and he knows um, the uh, a good deal of um, um, just uh, has a lot a, a wealth of uh, organizational and institutional um, um, history. So that's a knowledge. So that's that's, um, he's just, uh, um, uh, once he, uh, both are present to kind of get a feel for the workings of our council. And, um, and part of our challenge is to um, find ways for people to bring in their talent and um, um, other, uh, in ways uh, on the council and, and in other uh, ways around specific projects um, that we that we are would like to deliver or envision or imagine um, in the senior in the uh, senior center and at in other venues in our town as well. Um, I'd like to uh, now turn things. Um, oh, first of all, so any uh, so we'll just say welcome uh, 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 as guest, and uh, I want to now uh, introduce. Um, 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 Paul Bockelman, who is our town manager. And um, it's really been uh, exciting to work 
uh, with him and collaborate with him. Um, and um, um, so he is here to introduce another um, person that you'll get to know very well. Paul? Thank you, Pat, and thank you all for inviting me and letting me be here. I appreciate that, and thank you for the work and the time you put in under these extenuating circumstances. So many people have things going on in their lives. Uh, we have to meet virtually, but you're all coming through, so we really appreciate that. So I have the distinct uh, privilege to introduce our new uh, Director of Senior Services, Haley Bolton. Um, Haley um, started on January 3rd. She comes to us from the, being the director of the Bernardson Council on Aging. And before that, she has, uh, uh, I won't say long, but because it's been an extensive tenure <laughs> because, um, with um, at working at Craig's Doors, working at the Amherst Survival Center and going to school at the University of Massachusetts. Um, Haley um, is, I felt bad because um, we waited a long time for her to get started. And then on her first week, we had all this sort of, we had staff turnover. We had, we had a water leak that came into her office and it was like, um, and she came back, which we were so happy about and, and, and has hit the ground running. Um, and so just want to introduce her formally to you. Many of you have already met with Haley because she's already been talking with folks, um, but just want to officially um, welcome her to and introduce her to the council and, and turn it over to Haley if there's anything. I think she's going to be terrific. I mean, we, she impressed the interview team. Many of you, uh, some of you were on the interview team with her, with her and um, brought her as the unanimous choice. So we're really pleased to have Haley with us. So Haley. Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here, be back in Amherst. Um, and those are some very kind words, Paul, so thank you for that. Uh, I think that we have a lot of work here to do in Amherst to get things back up and running, but I'm certainly up for the challenge. And just from my brief interactions with some of you, I feel like you're very much on the same page. Um, so I don't want to hold up the meeting too much longer. I really want to get into what you all want to talk about and the ways that we can make the Senior Center a better place. All right. Well, um, thank you. Um, um, you know, one of the things I think that's on our minds, um, Haley, is um, just really um, how, how any thought, it, any first impressions or how you think um, how you think the council could best nurture our partnership together. As I read the history and have, uh, understood of the history of the, uh, that our relationship of the relationship between the council on aging and uh, its director, um, you know, we, um, we in some ways um, bring um, a values and energy um, and, and hopefully candor uh, to uh, where we see what, a look at our strengths and those areas that we can improve in. And so uh, any, any words to share with us about um, how you, the things that would help us strengthen that partnership and mm. keep it uh, constructive? Sure. Um, so I've always kind of envisioned the council as you have your fingers on the pulse. You are the people who are out in the community, you're representing the public. So I really draw on your experiences to help me shape our programs, how we develop, um, the way that we want to move forward. You know, I think that that relationship is really important. You know, you're my advisors in a sense, and I'm here to do what's in the best interest of the seniors, and you're kind of their mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Um, some first impressions, I feel we definitely need to weather this COVID winter. You know, we're, we're still very much impacted by that and still very limited by that. But I feel optimistic that by springtime, we'll be able to do more. We'll be able to use more space here for more programs. Um, I've spent the last week and a half reaching out to folks at UMass about potential partnerships, um, mm -hmm. you know, trying to draw on some of the community ties I built here when I was at the survival center. Um, so I really feel like once we get through the next couple months, we'll have a lot more ability to reach our target audience. Um, and certainly, you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about later is this age-friendly project. And I think that can be a great vehicle towards, um, you know, increasing our visibility in the community, getting more outreach. Um, 
you know, we really want to use this downtime to kind of remind people that we're here. We have a lot to offer. We will have even more to offer very soon. Um, so I'm trying to stay positive while still confronting the reality that we can't do everything we want to do right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anyone else have any questions for Haley? Okay. All right. Well, thanks to both of you uh, <laughs> um, for um, um, helping us lay the foundation. And um, I think that uh, we're certainly on common ground, uh, understanding that part of what we have done uh, in the past year has been really uh, um, re uh, reflection and also e examination, criti critically looking. I, I say lovingly, critically looking um, at our strengths and weaknesses and, mm -hmm. and also uh, widening uh, the welcome, uh, opening our arms to other, uh, to fresh new thinking about uh, programming and services. And um, so there's been a lot of energy around that. Um, so, um, and just, this is really a good segue um, to, um, um, to, to, uh, uh, to the uh, item D um, um, is to look at uh, empowering Amherst seniors. And uh, Rosemary, I, I'm wondering, uh, you, I think I, um, you, know, you, you might wanna lead off if you feel able uh, to discuss uh, steps towards um, as the conversations that you and Jacqueline and I have had about um, ways of looking at how to em empower Amherst seniors. I, I see, a, is that a hand up, um, Charles? Nope. Oh, no, okay. it's not. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, okay. Uh, so Rosemary. We can't hear you. <laughs> You're muted. There you go. Actually, I had a talk with um, one of the town councilors, Dorothy Pam, um, last week, and um, she was very helpful in um, giving us some suggestions as to how we can empower Amherst seniors. She felt like um, we need to make sure that council members are in touch with their town council member. Um, you know, we have five districts in, in Amherst and you need to know who your town councilor is representing you in your district and be in touch with them. Let them know who you are and what you do and what you feel is important for the future of the senior center. And I thought that was a, a very good thing. She also felt that um, we need to... Um, you know, people have pointed out that perhaps we don't have as many services, as much uh, desirable space, um, as much, you know, budget as some of the other towns around. And why is that? And um, we need to look into that and do a little research and see what it is that um, other places have that we don't have and have the facts, not just... Um, guesswork, um, what, what population other towns have and um, what kind of services they have. And I thought that was, was quite good and helpful. I think we need to think in terms of uh, what we can do to improve services and space at the senior center. So that was just um, one, of, one of the thoughts. We have to think about what's important in terms of um, people with hearing um, issues. Uh, our sound system in our rooms at the senior center is very poor. And many times people come to meetings or in a class and can't hear. And we don't have uh, good sound for that purpose. So those are some of the, some of the um, things that we need to be aware of and we need to um, let our town councilors know these issues as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to say um, I want to say hats off to Paul 
um, and um, to Dorothy, um, our town councilor, um, and to Mindy Dom, who also, uh, all three have encouraged us to build uh, relationships and offer feedback and um, to uh, our elected officials. Um, I keep, <laughs> this, this is driving me crazy. I'm not used to this room. Um, so um, the, um, and I, I will say that our, our discussion was really very focused. It was a Zoom meeting and uh, I would be happy to share, um, before that meeting, I did some preparation. We, we did some preparation together to make best use of our time. And basically our goal was basically just to, from our perspectives, uh, on the council is how things are how things stand for Amherst seniors right now. Um, how do our senior services compare with that of other towns? How can our members of the uh, our council best communicate and most effectively uh, communicate uh, about the future of the Amherst Senior Center and and various services to members of the town council? They need to know. They hold the purse strings. They're in touch with voters. They need to understand what our problems and our challenges are and our victories. Um, and, um, uh, and also, I think, um, uh, quite frankly, um, those things don't happen unless uh, I, 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 if we stay in the realm of um, just sort of abstract discussion, we need to be able to mobilize, organize and mobilize seniors uh, to express themselves. Um, uh, we're not at the point, no one in our town is at the point really of, of doing, um, of, you know, holding hearings, for example, uh, some of the instruments mm -hmm. of organization and mobilization uh, are not possible in this, in this moment, but we certainly can do our homework, do, re do some research. One thing she suggested that I thought was really useful especially to our, our newest members um, and might also be wel welcome by Haley is to do, maybe to do conduct a tour of um, the Amherst Senior Center with our counselors and just, uh, you know, masked and six foot apart. But uh, there are some things, very visual things that uh, provide a, a real, a much deeper understanding of uh, how things were in the past and how they are now. And that helps cultivate thinking for, for the future. So, um, you know, I, um, I just, um, um, I wanted to share that with us and I can share um, what I've just said uh, with the wider council, uh, because I think that might help keep us, it may, may if you're interested, it can, uh, let us know and it'll help keep us grounded as to um, how we can connect. Um, I just sent uh, earlier this afternoon um, something that um, a, a, um, a, an easy way for you to con connect and identify uh, your counselor, the face of the, and the, co the composition of the council, the town council has changed since the election. And uh, so there are some new faces, new energy and ideas, and it's important for us to know what those are. So my action challenge, uh, our action challenge to you between this meeting and when we gather again, is to find out who your counselor is um, and um, uh, based on, you know, know what your election district is and, um, and um, begin to cultivate that relationship and reach out to them um, as you feel able. So um, that's, um, are, any, any questions or comments about that? And also know that each district has two counselors and there are three counselors at large. So um, do a little exploring <laughs> and, and learn who these people are. Well, I'm, I'm certainly um, thankful for that suggestion because yes, I voted, but I don't know who's who. I, I know my, I know, I know my precinct. You know, like sometimes we can just get a little too busy that we don't pay attention to 
certain things. And that that's one of them that always takes the back seat. Like I know Mindy Doom, but I don't know who the counselors are um, ever since this new council was put in place mm -hmm. and what their platform is and what kinds of things are, are important to them. And I certainly will uh, reach out by email and let them know that I'm on the council now and I wanna understand a little bit about what they're doing. Thanks for that, Christina. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that, you know, we're looking towards doing that um, as, as the year goes on in, in a more in a organized and focused way. Uh, but I know uh, each of you have bring some experience in healthcare, in, um, in um, housing, um, in, um, uh, transportation, some of the challenges that people face uh, when they can't get to medical appointments, um, and, um, and also imaginations uh, uh, are, and issues around food and, and wellness um, are certainly other important issues, um, as well as the social um, and mental health um, um, during, during this time. How do we help people uh, feel less isolated, isolated from each other. So, um, and I, I want to say, um, with, there was some reference to this uh, earlier that um, that um, there, as you may know, just to refresh your memory, there there is a working group uh, on uh, uh, the age friendly dementia friendly initiative, um, and. Um, uh, we certainly um, think that that's, that is certainly one opportunity for us to be in a more focused con uh, conversation with uh, colleagues um, and various stakeholders in um, um, uh, bringing some uh, sensitivity and vitality uh, to our town. Um, and uh, so I'm excited about that um, and specifically uh, Margaret has expressed, Margaret Crone has expressed some interest in that and a willingness to participate. Um, um, and I think that some, uh, uh, one or two other members um, have also expressed a willingness to um, stay in touch. And our hope is um, that uh, Margaret uh, would uh, communicate back to us, um, you know, some of the, what she's learning about uh, her experience in that conversation. And uh, that will also help us shape um, some uh, conversations that we have in the future about, about various needs. Did you wanna add anything more about that, Rosemary? <laughs> we need to, okay, <laughs> I think she's- Rosemary, Rosemary is muted. I okay. almost never mute my- <laughs> because it's quiet around here, but um, regarding the age dementia friendly, I think several members, has anyone else been interested in joining the working group? Chad, had you been? Um, yeah, they signed me up. Okay, great. Okay. And I will be going to the first meeting as well, although I don't know if I'll be able to continue. Um, and um there will be a meeting, uh, actually it's under announcements, I'll just make it now on January 20th is the very first meeting of the working group from 1 to 2.30. And if you are not um, going to be part of that working group, it, of course, all of these meetings are open to the public. Anyway, anyone can attend. So mm -hmm. um, I, did, I think it will be posted in the next day or two. And you can go to the amherstma.gov slash calendar and you will get the link to the meeting. Mm -hmm. So it will be from one to 2.30. And I think that could be, you could sit in and see um, what they're, they're about to discuss and what the um, schedule at, of the project is. And if there is time, there will be some discussion of the survey questions. Mm -hmm. 
which could be valuable. And I think they are willing to take input from other people as uh, for the survey questions. Mm -hmm. so. All right, thanks for that. Any other comments um, on, uh, on, um, on that? Um, Charles. Well, I'm a, I'm a member of the, uh, I volunteer with Craig's Doors and we serve a community breakfast every Wednesday. And I know that some of the people that come to get the meals, the unhoused people, some of them were quite old and some of them maybe have mental health issues, but I guess they're beyond our, beyond our reach. But they, they have to eat that meal outside. And it's, you know, it's wonderful to be able to feed them hot food. And I feel they get kind of, kind of left out. Mm -hmm. And I, I mm -hmm. guess there's nothing we can do about it because they're not citizens. I don't know. They're elderly residents of our town and that falls under our purview as the Council on Aging. Okay, all right, good, well. I would second that. I think that that's part of the goal of the Council is to identify those who have, who have been uh, invisible, who have felt uh, unwelcome, who have, um, you know, who, who have fallen through the gaps in, in many ways. Um, and so they are fellow, fellow um, human beings in, in the town and in, in this town. And so um, they're very, I think- They're very courteous. They're very courteous. They're very grateful for the food. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe we should try to include them. Yes, of course. And I think we all have to realize that many of the people who use the senior center, most of the people are healthy and able to come and enjoy and participate. But there is a hidden group that are not able to do that. And mm -hmm. they should no longer be hidden. They have mm -hmm. to be part of the community and part of our services as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for those comments. Um, um, and speaking of food and uh, food deserts and food challenges, um, I would, um, for, for those who have not yet met Norma Halleck, um, she um, serves, um, as, as a, has been um, involved with the Senior Center for many years. Um, uh, doing blood pressure checks uh, for folks and uh, just a variety of things. She and I have co-taught uh, classes in fall prevention, which was really um, a riot and <laughs> uh, quite the uh, experience. And so her knowledge of Amherst and her service to Amherst has really been great. Specifically, she is connected um, to the Nutrition Committee of Highland Valley Elder Services. And Highland Valley is the, um, uh, I think of them as uh, part of the, as, as, as a supplying uh, a conduit for federal money um, to, um, it, that go, co goes into uh, various uh, services, but certainly into the nu nutrition program uh, and into Meals on Wheels um, and to the network of people there. So she, uh, her, um, so Norma, tell us what, what's up with uh, what you're hearing and seeing with relationship, in relationship to uh, nutrition and Meals on Wheels and other programs. Thank you, um, Pat. It's um, Highland Valley is a nonprofit organization, and they've they service twenty eight um, communities in Western Mass. Um, and one one of them is the Meals on Wheels, but and they also do the um, the grab and go meals, which are normally people that would come to the sites and um, have their lunchtime uh, meal. But they, you know, with COVID, we can't do that and most of the sites aren't open. The only one that's, that's been open is Hatfield. And, um, and, and Cummington 
which is one of the hill towns, is going to try one day a month, one Tuesday a month, to see if they can get people together because their people are really isolated and mm -hmm. particularly, you know, up there. Um, and so what we do is have a meeting every other month and the people that go to these take grab and go meals or the, uh, when they have them in place at the, at the sites from Westfield is probably the largest Washington house. Uh, but there's Amherst, there's Northampton um, and the meals are prepared at the Walter Salvo house in Northampton. So anyone from these towns are welcome to, uh, you know, to be, if they're on the board to be representative to, um, you know, to this, but they, um, they don't usually come. This usually the same six of us and three are from the administration, the, the uh, director, Alan uh, Wimette and the uh, head chef, Riley Brown. And uh, we have a new a uh, wonderful nutritionist who is really upbeat and uh, and it puts herself right into to the work. She in during COVID, this is not not easy, but she has done and she's only been with us two months, but uh, she does um, has visited all of the the sites, and I think there are fourteen of them that are have been active. And then in the spring. She will do uh, site visits where they aren't notified, I guess, and just show up and make sure that things are on the up and up. Um, and so what they do then is have community reports and they're, they're sent in and Kelly is, the, this is Kelly Slattery who is the, the new nutritionist and she meets with the, the people every, month that are running the site. Um, and so their comments and some, you know, you can't please everybody. So does someone not mute it because they think there's some background noise. There's no noise here. So I don't know. Um, thank you, Charles. Yeah, but probably not you either. Chad, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, uh, they they read off you know what people liked and didn't like and how they could improve it and some of the comments are you know they're they're very useful but you can't please everybody and as sometimes as many people complain about something as other the rest seem to really like like it so this month they they did a survey on uh, the, the turkey or chicken pot pies. And that got really good ratings. People seem, seem to like that. Um, but then they got some comments and asked, they want constructive criticism, but I think sometimes seniors don't understand that um, there are a lot of diets that they have to address too, diabetics or gluten-free or allergies to certain things. So, um, that has to be taken into account. Um, but they wanted to know two things. Did the hot meals arrive hot and did the cold meals arrive cold? And that may seem like a simple thing, but they just got a new van that they had a very special equipment to, to do this. And um, so they're trying to, and everybody um, did say that things were okay except one town. I'm not naming names for that, but, um, and someone wanted more vegetables and protein and somebody else wanted uh, less carbs. Um, some wanted the uh, overcooked vegetables to not happen that way. But you know, when you're, you're cooking for um, almost, you know, 600 and, to 700 people a day, it's not easy to, you know, again, keep everything that way, but they're, they're really careful. The, the crew that's on, Kelly, is, Kelly, the new nutritionist, goes to work with 
the workers that put the meals together. Riley uh, is the main chef and he, he does, he's very creative and innovative and um, dreams up these recipes. And I'll tell you about um, one that he thought he would surprise people with. And it was a really big hit. And it was stuffed peppers and um, macaroni and cheese with squash in it. And I think all that went in the pepper, but I'm not sure but people, people liked it. Um, and over the, the past few months, for, we had two holidays with Thanksgiving and Christmas, and um, they served 840 meals on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and are delivered. Um, mm -hmm. And and then um, Christmas had a similar um, time. He he also likes to experiment. So instead of doing what he usually does for the dessert, and these are from scratch, he made apple pies. Not just he, but the group, and those were a big hit. So that's good. Um, people really like the choice meals, um, and they're really in full swing. They uh, will be doing this with the home delivered meals eventually, but right now they're just trying to gear up. I think they got iPads for the drivers um, so they could be in touch and people could order, And but they're trying to figure out the logistics of that. Um, so, um, and not to, I, uh, sorry to interrupt, Norma, but uh, I just I wanted to make some room here for some questions that uh, other uh, council members might have of this program, uh, particularly uh, because as we connect to our friends and neighbors in the region, just uh, this keeps coming up again and again. How uh, my, uh, um, what are the qualifications to receive? Uh, uh, to participate in the grab and go? Who gets, how do people find out about their eligibility regarding um, uh, the uh, home delivered meals? Um, can, you, can you share, is there anything you can well, share with us about I, that? Well, what we have is a pamphlet that I'm trying to collect enough of them to bring to all of you. But I haven't been to Highland Valley for two years, well, you know, since we've been had COVID, so um, I will get them. But they do, they have a lot of services and they have an intake person. So mm -hmm. the person, you know, could call, anybody can call and their number's in the, the phone book, but um, I don't happen to have it right here. Uh, but they are, um, yeah, they, I think you have to be, live in a certain town and, um, but, you know, but, they will give, they don't question it. They just deliver them. So, and they hope that people will give a donation. Uh, they used to be $3 and I think it went up a little, but the mules are really very good. I used to go and sit with the people at least once a month, and, mm -hmm. you know, get their comments and stuff and mm -hmm. share the meal with them. So, um, any other, oh. any, any other more, any other questions that you have for Norma? Um, specifically around policies on food um, insecurity in Amherst, observations you wanna make? Um, one of the questions I have is, um, do you have to be have a low income to be eligible for the meals or can mm -hmm. anyone uh, get? I think, I think anyone can, they don't, they don't question it. They, you know, they expect that they would maybe give a donation whereas some people may not be able to, but. Sure, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Even for the grab and go, there is no eligibility requirement. That's right, they, have, they should be 65 and over, 60, I don't know if it's 60 or 65, yeah. yeah. What, Don, what Donna yeah. tells me is 60. Um, 60 is, a, yeah. 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 So I, that's, that really opens up some possibility. I think that there are many seniors who could qualify for these lunches who don't realize in, in Amherst who, who uh, could, um, you know, who, who need to know about this uh, yeah. because it certainly helps if you're on a fixed income and um, you have a meal uh, that you 
uh, if you're able to pick it up, that's that's one hand. I do think that there there seems to be a screening progress for the delivered meals, um, yeah. and I I have um, two days a week in the in the past uh, I don't know <laughs> uh, five or six months um, I have um, de uh, delivered hot meals to people, and it I, I will say that it has been one of the single most uh, awakening experiences of, of, of my being in Amherst. Um, so, um, because uh, you, you learn an awful lot on the front lines uh, on, uh, you know, housing, um, medical issues, challenges, and, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, just general welfare, psychological. I mean, we're, we just, we just, present the meals, but even those rare encounters for some Amherst seniors is the only person, we are often the only person that, per, you know, the only human encounter that person has that day. And so um, it is, um, it, it certainly has caused me to uh, um, want us to look at some, how we can better improve these programs, at least fundamental outreach. Uh, we can do, I think a much better job, maybe using the senior spirit um, and um, uh, just make sure that those who need, need the, this, this kind of nutritional support um, know um, that, uh, that, they, that it's available for them. Um, so, um, thanks so much. Excuse um, me, I see Chad, I see Chad has okay. his hand up. Oh, okay, thanks, Chad. Well, um, the town manager is here. Uh, maybe we could ask him if we could have a budget to really publish, uh, publicize that, those meals. Um, you know, the, the, the full um, service is the eyes on. It's really not about the nutrition although that is a piece of it. These folks are isolated. Uh, as Chaz Stevenson said, um, some of them are um, infirm, uh, some of them are poor. We don't have any money at the COA. I wonder if um, part of the survey that's coming out can, can find out something about that. Uh, but would, would uh, the town have any money for something like that, uh, Mr. Walkerman? Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it depends what I mean. What your what the plan is? What what your what you need funds for? Um, you know, it, it, are you looking at um, flyers? I mean, there's a lot of things resources we have within the town already that we can utilize. So, I mean, we can work with Haley on that in terms of helping to spread the word. We have lots of different tools to help with that. So I think you're right. This is a really important program. I think, Chad, you hit it on the head. It's not just the meal. It's the uh, eyes on connecting with folks for the day. It might be the only interaction that folks have. So it is. that's why the, the program is so important. Um, mm -hmm. And we, if people don't know about it, we need to let them know about it. So however, we, whatever, we, it depends what, what we're talking about. Um, but we can certainly help you with that for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I see uh, Karen's hand. Thanks. Yeah, Paul. I also drove for last year for um, the meals program. And yes, I, I found that I wanted more training. You know, I didn't really, I think that hand, that eyes on is very important, but I think it was really underemphasized in the instructions that I got. And I did get some inconsistent messages. And I think I would have done a better job if I knew more clearly what my role was and what I was supposed to do and what I wasn't supposed to do. And I think there is an untapped potential there for connection that isn't being made right now. Absolutely, I would second that. Um, I would say um, um, that we, um, um, you know, we, we, you know, my visits were to, to people uh, every week. And so, uh, that's um, that's helpful, and I think um, I think what the other thing I noticed about the volunteers themselves, um, and this speaks speaks to about um, seniors creating meaning in their own lives. Um, 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 I should say my husband also volunteered, and frankly, um, um, 
that do, I think that documents how much seniors, uh, senior people are giving to others in this town. Uh, they give in their taxes, uh, they, if they're retired and they're, uh, they, they volunteer their services. And most of the drivers that I've noticed uh, are, are uh, could, could be considered seniors themselves. And they're out there, um, you know, doing the doing this work and really enriching. Uh, I mean, I don't want to over oversell it, but it, it this helps to enrich a sense of community in our in our town, a sense of connection and valuing each person. So um, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think that we need to figure out a way as a council to make some recommendations around that. Uh, as to how we can raise our game on that issue. And I think, uh, uh, Karen, what you're saying is uh, regarding training, I think would be, would be very helpful. Um, I, some of my friends and neighbors are also volunteer. Uh, I live in Greenleaves and probably, <laughs> I, we, <laughs> there, we, there, probably I could name five, five people from Greenleaves who, are, who have uh, driven uh, for Meals on Wheels, uh, or who walk a route as I do. And um, so I think that there's a lot of talent and not just pushing a cart or handing the meal, but um, I think on the policy side of things, who gets, you know, who, who's receiving the meals, where are their gaps in services? How can we make it better? So um, we, um, there's some real potential um, as we look for that program. And I think, I think uh, it would be good for uh, Highland Valley to get some serious feedback as well on this program. Um, because this question about um, qualifications uh, comes up and we need to understand it. And if our seniors in our town who are uh, in great need are not getting services, these are the grandmas and the grandpas and the people um, that have worked all, you know, their lives and how do we enrich the quality of their lives um, you know, and provide uh, uh, avenues for basic needs to be met? How can we do that? How do we build community in doing that? So um, anyway, that's, um, thanks so much uh, for your service. And uh, Norma, you wanted to say one more thing. I did just, um... Did they not explain the wellness check? I mean, you don't have to do an exam, but just to see that they're answering the door or that they're they're still with us. Um, I would know, say I, vague, I, would, I would say it was vague instructions, but there there wasn't really the instruction. What happened if the person didn't you know didn't answer? You wouldn't oh, note yeah, down or good. what if I yeah. I don't know. I just I often struggled with what exactly I was supposed to do. Okay, um, that, that under certain circumstances. Good. Yeah, and that's critical because uh, I don't know, I certainly in my family of origin, we've had seniors who uh, lay, you know, my, uh, an aunt in Massachusetts um, lay on the floor for three days in Pittsfield and uh, because she fell and couldn't get up and, you know, was semi-conscious and then, I mean, she nearly lost her life. These are you know, these are things that, um, you know, uh, this, this is a systemic problem and that there are some systemic solutions to this. And that's, I think, part of the work of our council is to examine not just the individual cases, but also what, what, what needs to be changed in the systems themselves and how do we mobilize around that? So, um, Paul, go ahead. Thank you. Just two things. Um, so I think the training uh, suggestions is a really good one. I know that at the beginning of COVID, we had a lot of, there's so much that we didn't know at that moment. We did, that we were anxious about people having direct contact and social distancing, but without losing people. I know there was a lot of work put into that. <laughs> sure. I like the new addition yeah. in, in Margaret's uh, arms. <laughs> 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 um, and I just want to mention that I have to get off at six, so it's yeah. for another thing, but just so, so you're aware of that. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Charles, Could, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Charles is muted. Yes, yeah. I'd like 
I'd, <clears throat> I'd like to mention again the community breakfast. To qualify for it, all you have to be is hungry. And preferably you should come and pick it up in person. And that's it. There's no age restriction. There's no income restriction. And I, you know, I'd like to inv invite any of you to come and eat with us some Saturday, some Wednesday morning from 8 to 11 at the Unitarian Meeting House. Wow. Come pick up, and, come pick up a meal and eat it. I've had, that's great. I've, had Phil, I've invited Phil Slower to do it twice. And to and Chad's point, that's great. And to Chad's point, building on Chad's point, uh, that's the kind of information that could be shared in the senior spirit if there's room. <laughs> and, and, and if there's not, what do we do about that? <laughs> so uh, as Haley said, we've got, we've got our work cut out for, her, uh, for us for sure. Okay. Um, I, I'm from, from those issues, thanks for everyone uh, participating um, in that in these conversations um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, they generate hope and uh, help to make our our ambitions more concrete. Um, I wanted to um, just move now quickly to the approval of me of the minutes the, uh, of the December sixteenth meeting. And I wonder uh, if we could do that, uh, if, if um, uh, what we would need is a motion uh, to um, approve the minutes or uh, any, any comments regarding uh, any feedback, anything that needs to be corrected. If there are no corrections, I make a motion that the minutes be approved. Do I hear a second? I second the motion. Thank you, Gregory. Um, okay, all those in favor of the approval of the minutes of December 16th, 2021, signify by raising your hand or, okay, thank you. Thank you for that. That motion passes. Um, all right. Um, possible future ag uh, agenda items. Um, I think we started to generate some, we have some examples. Um, uh, uh, in your minutes uh, regarding, um, you know, um, projects and issues that deserve attention. Um, this, this Council on Aging um, is, uh, has, has made a cultural shift from being kind of, uh, um, and, and I don't want, I, I think that Council has done many, many great things, and I, um, um, in the pa past councils for sure. Um, and at the same time, I think that uh, part of the energy and the reflection now uh, in having a wider welcome, a willingness to ask, have frank conversations, and look uh, carefully at uh, real issues that impact people is something that. We, we are empowering each and every one of you to, um, to consider and to uh, speak up about and uh, help us think through how we together can be better advocates for uh, change on behalf of seniors and, uh, and how, you know, how we can empower seniors, other seniors to uh, uh, address these problems. So I would just say, um, I want to say at the beginning of the year that uh, this year, I want, I want to reiterate that if you have some suggestions for pro, uh, uh, agenda items or for projects or for training or for whatever, um, for, for along those lines, uh, for agenda items, um, then um, you can speak to any one of um, the, the leadership team and um, and bring that to our attention so that we, so that we're collectively shaping our, um, you know, um, the, the, the issues that we're working on. Uh, it's bumpy, folks. I mean, the, the process by doing this, it's bumpy, it's messy, um, but we're not afraid to disagree with each other um, and still uh, find some common ground. And that's what we're looking for um, in, um, and, and, and looking for support for um, other activists around these issues. So um, it's a tall order. Um, 
I wanted to, uh, we could just uh, at this moment uh, around this agenda item, we could shout out, uh, are, are there some issues that um, have just, that you're, you're interested in or con concerned about um, that you wanna speak, speak up to uh, beyond what you've already shared? Things that are on your mind, uh, Karen. I can't remember if I shared this or just asked a question last time and it was about uh, the relationship or joint projects with leisure services or what used to be leisure services. You know, it seems like there are fewer and fewer offerings that are targeted towards adults at leisure services. And I think there's a pretty good segment of the older population that would like to be doing things through leisure services, but there's just scant offerings. And this yes. predates COVID. You know, I understand that part of this is probably COVID right now, but this goes back before COVID. And yes, it does. You know, I, I think about things that, that could really tap into more seniors and uh, in terms of activities, outdoor activities and um, recreational activities. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think, um, I'm hearing that too from, from seniors. Um, uh, it's actually walkability is one of the issues that I've been hearing. Safe places, particularly in the winter months, um, uh, uh, safe, well lit, not icy. Um, you know, we've got resources in the town. And I've also heard and I've noticed myself that the, it's pretty slim pickings for other recreational activities for uh, that are uh, appropriate for seniors. So um, sure. I think that, you know, I've been thinking long and hard um, and, um, and invite you to join uh, th that thinking about how we, um, how we can help um, uh, deliver those concerns in a constructive way to Haley. For example, uh, we, you have noticed that, I've noticed that, I know Rosemary and I have discussed this um, already. So, you know, maybe what we, say, what we do uh, is we just simply, um, you know, make a resolution, introduce a resolution because that's how we do some things uh, together. Introduce, say, uh, you know, identifying that need and uh, that encourages um, and, and uh, strengthens uh, Haley in her uh, connections with her colleagues and her boss, frankly, um, and saying, look, this is what I'm hearing from seniors. Um, how can, wh what can we do here? What, what resources can be used? Uh, we, we think that there's a big gap here. And I mean, there are a lot of different ways to do, to do that, um, but we, at least that gives her um, that, I think that's a great, I mean that, Haley can speak to that, but that's one tool that she has when she, she goes to uh, her meetings is that she can say, let's, I'm hearing this from seniors. There, you know, it's not, it's not uh, rocket science here. There are, if you look every time I look at the leisure services, which gets mailed at probably significant cost to lots of people in our town, I look and I see what is there for us? <laughs> What's there for us? And yeah, there could be art classes, there could be painting, there could be um, outdoor activity classes. Yeah. And I ball. think that we, we <laughs> also have, um, have to consider the fee for some seniors might be prohibitive, but we have at the senior center always had a fund that can help people with programs that they can't afford. That's right. So uh, that's one, one thing that could happen. Charles. Well, years ago, years ago when I lived in East Hampton, we had a walking group, you know, and it could be walking at Hampshire Mall it could be walking outdoors, depending on the weather. Sure. And sure. some group, some groups require you to converse constantly, and some groups don't <laughs> want you to talk. <laughs> yeah. So, that's kind of up to the the, uh, the group, the walking. Yeah. But certainly, yeah. mall walking, mall walking can be a lot of fun. You'll yes, find quite definitely. a few people at Hampshire Mall. Yes. I see a couple of raised hands here. <laughs> okay. So, 
Thank you. I see. Um, thanks for noticing that. Um, let's see. We haven't heard uh, as uh, too much from uh, Christina yet. Christina, go ahead. Yes. Um, I, one of the things that I feel is important is that we don't spread, you know, it's nice to have a whole uh, list of ideas and concerns, but that we don't spread ourselves too thin and that if we really wanna make a difference in the lives of our seniors, then we do have to find out what the needs are. Yeah. How to go about that and work with Haley to get a, uh, whether it's by phone call or whether it's by survey uh, to get people to say what are the top few things that are a priority in their life. Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. isolation or is it lack of nutrition or is it less programming? The other things are great. I mean, everybody needs leisure. And I, and Karen mentioned that before when we were in that small group meeting. And it is important that, that those who can afford it make it affordable for seniors. But I think that we first have to identify what our seniors need. Mm -hmm. We don't really know because of the pandemic was scattered. People mm -hmm. are in their homes before they could walk or take the bus or something and come into the center. Mm -hmm. Yes. And be with each other and make their concerns be known. Yep. But now that people are at home, we do not know. And the, so I think our first action is to find out what is it that people need most? And then we go and we systematically and collectively work on providing that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's, if it's, if it's, more programming, so be it, then we work on that. If it's mm -hmm. nutrition, then we work on that. But when, mm -hmm. we, when we throw out a lot of ideas, ideas are good, but it's not going to help the people that really need the help. We, we have to work on it. We have to create a working, like you said, Patricia, resolution and say, this is what people need right now. And we're going to, there's probably people that are lonely and isolated. You know, I would, I would guess that that's one of the major things. Mm -hmm. We need to address that. And if someone does can't eat or can't go to a program, we need to address that. We need to know where the people are. What are they doing? What do they do for these are the type of questions I'm envisioning. I'm not a public health official. I've only worked in a nursing home, but I'm envisioning that people, you need to really talk to people, whether it's by phone or get the people to tell you, what is it that they need? What can we do to help them get through this period of mm -hmm. isolation? Mm -hmm. Well, that's certainly something that people could do in door-to-door -door meal deliveries, too. Ah, wow. Yeah. Uh, Chad, I wanted to recognize you. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Christine is um, speaking directly to what I've been mentioning, that we need a strategic plan, puts its finger on what we need to advocate for and, and find assistance with. And this is why I'm hoping that the age-friendly and dementia friendly survey will do. So if, yeah. to answer your question, Pat, it would be that um, more people speak during a meeting, that we have open debate during a meeting and that it'd be easier to get on the agenda. Thank you. Okay. All right, okay. So uh, let me move around to waking up the light here. Um, okay. So um, announcements, um, Rosemary uh, announced uh, the age, actually the age-friendly uh, community event. Um, I think that uh, all, many of the departments in town, uh, including um, Paul Bockelman's um, uh, office, uh, struggle with this notion of um, 
uh, having strategic planning during the time of COVID. And uh, so we're still wrestling with that. And I'm sure that that's something that, um, that um, Haley will, um, you know, be a, perhaps a, able to help us figure out how we can do some of that uh, strategic planning. Because I think the, the um, um, because the mechanisms are just more difficult now uh, in terms of meeting and having a retreat is the, has, has, has been very useful in my own career as an activist at the beginning of years to sort of do that uh, strategic uh, identification. What are our priorities? Let's hone in on the top three or something like that. That's certainly one way to work, but there's certain, a variety of, of ways to make that happen. And, uh, and our resources are limited. We, as a council, do not, we do not deliver services. We don't, you know, but we, we can advocate for um, and identify some problems. And so uh, I look forward uh, to uh, getting, uh, learning more about uh, that uh, age-friendly, dementia-friendly project, but it is a time-limited one. And uh, you know, it's something that was generated by a, uh, another, you know, an, a, a grant from another organization. Um, and so, uh, but we will continue as a council. So, um, you know, um, let's see. Uh, and Christina, go ahead. Um, I just want to make a distinction between what Chad said and what I said. I, okay. I did not. I did not suggest a strategic plan. What I suggested was a needs assessment. We work with whoever can help us get that information, and then we know for sure what the seniors need. Okay. The way I see it is right now we don't know what the seniors' needs are mm -hmm. because we're scattered. We're not able to come. People are not able to just walk in and say, "Hey." Right. Talk with others, socialize, let them know what they need. And then people tell them, well, go here, go speak to that one. Um, so what I'm envisioning is that we find out whether it's by phone call. I'm happy to make phone calls, uh, you know, even on my Good. day Saturday and yes. call okay. seniors up and say, sure. hey, I'm on the council. I want to know what's mm -hmm. what's been going on, what, you mm -hmm. know. How are you yep. making out during this yeah. time? I like that, yeah. Okay, um, in the interest of time, um, I just, I wanted to uh, make sure that I um, just add um, one important announcement. Um, and that is that um, it's with uh, some regret that I have to share the news that um, on February 8th, uh, I will be leaving you. Um, to join my husband and um, in our move to Seattle, Washington. Um, and uh, so I will be uh, leaving the council um, very, very soon, actually. Um, so um, I, it's, I just wanted to say that it's been an absolute honor and privilege to, to um, work, do this work. Uh, together with everyone. And um, um, we certainly have achieved some things that, um, that I am proud of. And uh, at the same time, there is so much more that uh, we can do. Um, during the time of COVID and during the time of racial reckoning, uh, we, have, we have often as a council led the way within this town to have conversations and think uh, and, and difficult conversations. And, um, and yet we have, uh, uh, as Dorothy pa Pam, who was our liaison pointed out, we have remained respectful of each other and welcoming of each other. And I think that that, that bodes well for this future. I am so excited to see the new blood uh, the new ideas and energy coming into this council. And I can say that um, we have um, more uh, possibilities for new newcomers. And we think um, uh, as of today that we have a person 
who, um, who is expressed interest and willing to be our secretary. And uh, that has to go through, she, uh, she has to be interviewed and so forth. But, um, and, the, um, and the council, need, both Paul and the council need to um, are, make the decision on that. But um, that is uh, that that help will help definitely help strengthen um, our team. Um, so, um, I, and I guess the the second part of my message is that in leaving, I want I, I also want to say that um, that um, Rosemary and Jacqueline really need your ideas and your help and your energy. And um, this is a time for us to to practice and refine our collective skills and strengths during this time. And um, um, so I, um, uh, we, we do, we don't just sit around and, <laughs> and sing, you know, sing Kumbaya, we try, we want to, we want to, we wrestle with real problems and real issues. And uh, um, so um, I think Part of my job, as I have seen it, is to engage in perpetual talent scouting uh, of people who want to join with us in this work in identifying the needs and bringing their energies and their spirit and their values to this work. Um, and so I, um, that's, that's my, my parting message is really to say thank you for the time um, and and love that you have put into um, our 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 time together and and that lies ahead in the future, so uh, I'm going to continue. I I I told I promised uh, Rosemary um, and and Jacqueline that uh, you know I would keep working. I'm not giving up my vote for one thing on this council until the back door. <laughs> gets my rear end, but uh, basically, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep uh, one as sort of as long as I can uh, continue. Um, but um, I do want to, I did want to let everyone know that that was that was happening. And, um, um, and that, and I, that's probably enough on that. And I just want to thank everyone for your commitment. Um, thank you. Good luck on your next adventure. Thank you. Yes, thank we, thank, you, we thank you for all thank that you have you. done, Pat. It, you've been a terrific leader and it's been made a big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the next COA meeting, uh, because of these losses, and I mean, let's just cut to the chase here. Uh, we're real, we are struggling. We're, we're, we have been weakened by some of these big things that are going on. Um, so we, we've, uh, Haley and Rosemary and Jacqueline and I have discussed this, that um, typically uh, in previous times that you, uh, usually there are some months when we don't meet and uh, we're thinking that given everything that's going on, maybe we, and, and our, our need to kind of gather our forces and do some of that talent scouting and replenish ourselves uh, that we not have a meeting. I, our proposal is that we not meet um, in February um, and give us, to, frankly, it's, it's give the leadership some time to uh, you know, gather ourselves together. And um, you know, that doesn't mean you can't call us or, you know, <laughs> or, or in fact, it's not downtime. It, it's really, you know, time to sort of uh, re rebuild our infrastructure, uh, I guess you could say. And so, um, and then, um, so what that would mean is that we would convene again in March. And so it, we wanted to put this to you. It could be, to, um, just because of the way that calendar falls, it could be March 10th for our next COA meeting or the 17th if we decide to do this. And I just wanted to get some feedback from you on what, what, your, you know, what your thoughts are. Um, 
and and Rosemary, you wanted to. I think you had some comments about uh, breaks in the council. Yeah, yes, we did. Um, typically, um, I've been with the council for so many years. Um, two um, terms back in two thousand seven, and and then uh, two terms just recently. Um, we would typically um, not meet in January or in August. Um, January was kind of a slow month, I guess. I don't know why it was chosen, but August, a lot of people were away. So that was easy uh, to do. So missing the February meeting is not out of line by any means. And there is no hard and fast rule that we have to meet every month. But I think there's a lot to, of work to do. And um, in the break, I think it's a good time that we all get to know our town counselors and let them know what our concerns are. And um, yeah, communicate by email, although we can't have discussions or deliberations by email because of open meeting law. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. Chad, did you have a question? No, not a question. Um, I'd say that the amount of energy needed to uh, produce a meeting is not that much that we should miss a month. I'd like to say that we are up against some, some new things and that uh, meeting more often is better. Uh, this survey is starting to happen. The survey that will develop uh, what uh, Christine is talking about, uh, that uh, you know it's kind of of one body. That's the left hand, the survey, the right hand is our strategic plan, how we develop uh, meeting that need. So, you know, um, my suggestion is that uh, if it's so overburdening for you three, how about half a meeting? How about a meeting with one specific agenda item? What's transpired at that um, age-friendly and dementia-friendly um, survey? Uh-huh. That's certainly Thank something you. that could happen. Um, any other comments on that? My question is, how many council members do we actually have? Well, we currently have eight council members. Um, if Charles Stevenson is um, interviewed and comes on, he will make a nine. And then Pat will be leaving, so that would vacate a position, but the person who would be secretary would fill that position. Mm -hmm. So we, there are, the council is full with nine members. Okay. I would also so, add, just with respect to uh, Chad's comment, I, I want to say, um, and I don't have any skin in the game on this, uh, on this, this since I'll be leaving. But um, I, I think that um, it, um, it is not so easy uh, to put together a meeting um, uh, to develop an agenda to do that collaboratively, and not just one person doing it uh, to to get it right. Uh, the the um, the work required, um, you know. Given, I mean, just to be honest, I mean, just what I see, you know. Rose um, Jacqueline's in the hospital right now. We don't know what her capabilities will be. Um, we currently, you know, I'm leaving. Uh, Rosemary is facing one of probably one of the most powerful challenges in her life. Um, that's the reality of life as a senior in some ways. And I don't, you know, I don't want to be over dramatic, but I think, you know, we're, it's, um, it's not so easy to do. Um, it re really requires thinking and planning and uh, conversation. And um, it has to be done in a timely fashion uh, and in a structure that, uh, you know, that, um, you know, so, I think that if you're, you know, um, if, <laughs> um, no, I, I agree, I, I agree with Patricia, I'm sorry to barge in, but I yeah. agree that there is a structure and it has to be done by the law, the, the open meeting law, and we <laughs> need to give people time to be able to attend. And so I don't have any problem with 
not meeting on in February, mm -hmm. as I see that we, you know, if you're not, if you're having challenges, then that is going to put a burden on you and you won't be as effective as you should be. And mm -hmm. neither will Rosemary or anyone else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will also add to what Pat said. It does take a fair amount of time to pull together an agenda when we work together to do that. It's not just sitting down for a half hour. We really, <laughs> we really do struggle with, you know, getting it together and getting it right, if there is such a thing as right. Mm -hmm. I'd like to suggest that some of us, Chad, go to that meeting. What is it called? The Alzheimer's? It's called the Age Dementia Friendly Meeting. And go to that meeting. They invited us. They said anyone can go to that meeting. Right. Go to that meeting in place of coming to this council because mm -hmm. I think that you're interested and the information you may want will come out of that meeting. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to hear about that. We mm -hmm. will hear about it. We we'll do. get a report on it in March. And Absolutely. I think it's very important, but you know what, Chad, they may not even get to the survey questions at this meeting. And I think that the survey is not our survey, it's going to be the entire working group. We right. can put in suggestions, but it's not our survey. Mm -hmm. Well, so. let me say one more comment about skipping the meeting. Um, and, you know, I go with the will of the group. Number one, it's not going to be a big agenda item, uh, hard thing to pull together. There would only be one item on, the, on, on it, and that would be what transpired at the meeting. How do we want to deal with it? Do we want to put a consolidated effort in, et cetera? It does a discussion and dialogue. Mm -hmm. And the other is you wouldn't have to coordinate it with uh, so many people because there's a, a, one person could do that. And there's three weeks in time for one person to write down one thing and get in touch with uh, Angela. So that's, I'm not, I'm not going to hog the discussion. That's, okay. uh, that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your input. Well, could we get an idea of how everyone feels about it? Um, how many people would prefer to um, meet in February? Or, um, Can I just ask a question? Is there something that can't wait until March? So is there something having to do with the survey where we would need to give input before our March meeting? That's not an easy thing to answer. Yeah. We don't well, you know, hard. I think the survey is going to be uh, my sense of it and having conversation with uh, their, th that is a process and this is just the, this meeting is just the beginning of that process. So uh, I, you know, the answer is we don't know, uh, but it, it's, it's not just going to be, uh, you know, we go, we give input. Uh, it's just, um, it's going to be, we're going to be hearing about this age friendly uh, survey for a while. And mm -hmm. I, I um, and I think that there's certainly some value uh, just echoing what Christina has said on the, you know, the notion of other kinds of forums for getting feedback from people uh, like, you know, phone calling, dividing, that could be fun, actually, you know, you know, doing a sample of of uh, sampling a few folks, or, you know, doing some targeted sampling or just, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you can't, um, we're, um, yeah, so I, so the, the, the answer is that it's going to be an ongoing process. And yes, you know, and, and actually, I spoke with Maureen. She said that if there is time, they will get to the survey, but it isn't clear that that will actually happen at this particular meeting. I think it's going to be, as Pat said, something that goes on for a while and certainly can be reported on in a March meeting, whatever happened at this um, age-friendly meet, uh, work group meeting. I don't I know think how we got it. I think we got enough work. We could meet weekly. So <laughs> I go in the total opposite direction. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, um, I, I feel that um, it might be best to wait until March for a meeting and let's do it March 10th rather than the 17th because that's mm -hmm. a little bit sooner. It's okay. a little less of a break. That sounds, sounds like a good compromise. So if you want to mark your calendars for March 10th at five o'clock. Now, here's another thing. Um, we're starting to meet at different times. Uh, we should probably evaluate. I, I don't know how this one got scheduled at five. Mm, I'll one, tell you, Chad. Another one was scheduled at five. We should, um, you know, uh, talk about whether it's meeting the need that it was assigned to. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Chad, but the reason for five o'clock is that we have two people who are have working schedules. Oh, good. Our two new members have working schedules and can't make morning meetings. Mm -hmm. Good. That's right. Yes. That's that's myself and Karen, right? Am I yes, right? Yes, correct. And so mm -hmm. we 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 said we applied, we said we will join the council, but everything works out just fine, except for those meeting times for us. And I put that in my application. I love would it. Like, would like to be considered, but cannot meet during the day. It is the exact time that my job asks me to meet. Mm -hmm. And I have two part-time jobs. So I'm a senior that continues working. Me There's too. no way that I can, you know, not work. I have to work. Uh -huh. Right. So thanks for to everyone. Uh, I uh, it's we're approaching the end of our time. We've gone gone a minute over, but that's all right. We did some great work today. Um, so uh, do I hear a motion uh, to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second. second. All right. Our meeting is ended. Thanks everyone. And thanks um, everyone. Yes. Okay. Nice well. to see you all. Okay, bye-bye. Do you stop the recording, Patricia, when the meeting ends? Yes. Okay, all right. And I think, uh, and Haley has the power to do that, right? <laughs> <Haley>? <laughs> I'm signing us off now. Okay. <laughs>